Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? Hope we all had a safe and productive week and we're all being safe out there. All right, today we're gonna to continue with the water side of the RUR unit. And this is gonna be setting up the unit. Okay, switching out the uh, factory installed plug to uh, filter if you have don't have a dedicated return line and you're gonna use the thermal bypass valve and then setting up the parameters within the unit and going over them. All right, so from, once you, 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 like last week's video, you have all of the piping done, the gas done, you got the unit plugged in, the vent is done. Now you wanna set the unit up. Okay, if you have a dedicated return line, there's nothing you have to do with swapping out this factory installed plug. Because if the dedicated return line is the factory installed, now we're gonna take the camera off, I'm gonna show you everything here, cut it close up. But right here on the hot water side, there is a fitting that inside of it is this device right here. All right, this is the factory installed plug. Inside of the um, instruction manual, you're gonna have a bag like this with a filter in it. Now, if you happen to have purchased the older RUR98 unit, so I'll just say from a supply house had them in stock, you're gonna find this bag hanging off of the heat exchanger inside the unit. But on the new senseis, they're gonna be inside the um, instruction manual. So, if you have a dedicated return line, this is gonna stay in, you do not have to touch it. But if you have the uh, thermal bypass valve, you're gonna push and turn this and remove it, and you're going to push and turn this filter on. And then you're going to install it right up back into, it's almost like a little Y fitting. And again, you don't have to make this thing super tight, just, just hand tight and a little turn, the O-ring will automatically stay in there. But let's just leave, leave it loose. Okay, so now you have that done, you're all set to set up now the parameters. The parameters you're gonna find in the instruction manual on page 50. So down here at page 50, this is the parameter sheet right here. This is what you're gonna go off of. So parameter one is the temperature setting between 120 and 140. Number two is altitude. Number three is when you wanna service it. A is disabled, you have B, which is six months, C is a year, um, D is two years. Then you have the recirculation. Okay, no circulation, dedicated, then long loop, short loop. Then you have your economy and comfort mode. And then you, then you go down, and number 10 is very important to check, which means natural gas or propane. So we're just gonna go through it quick and show you what you have to do. First thing, of course, we're gonna plug it into our extension cord. You're gonna hear the water servo valve click on, you're gonna hear the fan turn on. Turn your on off button on, you got 120. Now you're gonna hit the A button. Again, we're gonna take the camera off, I'm gonna show it to you close up. Hit the A button for two seconds, you go into parameters. So right now, we're at B. If you wanna change it to A, you hit the on off button. That means now it's set at factory 120. So when you get to this, it's going to be set at A. If you want to set it to 120, you hit the on-off button. Okay? Let me see. Let me get this a little bit closer so we can see it better. How's that? And adjust this so we're right in the frame. All right. So hit the on-off button and back to A. Then you're going to hit the up arrow. You have your altitude, which is 2,000 feet set. All right, now number three, you hit the up arrow, you got number three, that's going to be your, um, when you want to service it. So this thing will actually notify people and say, hey, you got to clean out the heat exchanger. You have, uh, excuse me, you have A, which is, it, there's no uh, warning. All right, B is six months, C is a year, D is two years, back to A. Okay, now you're going to go to number four, which is the recirculation. Now, let me show you something. With this thing here, you have A, which is, it's on B, which means dedicated. Then you have C, which means that's your bypass, long loop, and D, short loop. Now, that's if you put your thermal bypass in. 
What's the difference between long loop and short loop? Just see how, how estimate how far the tankless is, is from the father's fixture. And that you can pretty much calculate. Now, I'm going to go back to A, which means no circulation. If you happen to leave that on A, and if you go try to get to number 5, it goes right to number 6. Because number 5 means economy and comfort mode. Comfort mode means it lets the pump run more, using a little bit more energy. Uh, actually, yeah, and economy mode lets the pump run a little bit less. So let me go back up to 4 and go to B. Now I have a number 5, which means uh, recirculation mode. Um, a is comfort. B is um, economy. I leave it on economy. And it's not because I'm economy gas services. All right. Then the next thing, which is really important, is number 10. Check it. Even though the unit you purchased says natural gas, they might have made a mistake and it might have come with B, which is propane gas. So make sure you're at A, you're all done, you don't need to go back to number one, go back up to the A button, hit it for two seconds, boom, Bob's your uncle. You're back to the, the settings. Now, this controller is the controller that you're going to use to set the parameters. Even on an exterior model, behind the door, this controller is there. Even though you might have Wi-Fi or the MC-195, this is the controller that's going to control the actual settings of the parameters. So now you're all ready, you're all set. So let's take the camera, let's get this back into... Uh, nope, wrong way, sorry about that. Okay, let's take this camera off and let's go down and let me show you what I'm talking about and the bleeding process. So let's start up here. Here is your A and B button. So let me press it. One, two. And now see I'm back at the parameter settings. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to press it again. One, two. And now I'm back to the 120. All right, so we don't need this on anymore. Okay, now let's get in, go into here is that fitting that has the plug slash filter. So see, there's the plug, that's the fitting. Let's just, we don't need that right now. So that is the actual, where the plug will be from the factory and you're gonna swap that out. Now, let's go over the bleeding process since I'm sitting here on my knees. All right. You turn the water on here at the um, valve kit cold. Now, you want to start bleeding this, the tankless, because you do not want to get air bound inside of this pump, because then you'll end up with a code 63. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pop this relief valve and take some water out of it, because that relief valve is tied right into the whole water system as a safety. So that will take some water out. Now, the next thing you want to do, and you want to use a 3.8 ID hose, you can get it from Home Depot, is you want to take two gallons of water out of this bleeder, which is the cold water bleeder that comes off of the water servo valve. You got two gallons of water out of that. Then you want to take two gallons of water out of that bleeder right there. That bleeder right there is the bleeder for the pump. Right there. You want to take water out of that two gallons. This here is not a bleeder, it's a drain. It's a drain for the condensate trap. So if you need to drain the condensate trap, you take some water out of that. Okay? All right, let's get this camera back up here. Give me a second. All right. Now, as far as the pump, for those of you that do new, brand new install, so brand new construction, and you're putting an RUR unit in, builder's going to say, hey, Joe, we're ready for you. You're going to hang the tankless, whether it's interior or exterior. You're going to hang that tankless, you're going to pipe in the water, pipe in the gas, or maybe the gas guy is going to do it, 
interior, you're going to run the vent, you're going to, you're going to get it all ready, but of course you're not going to use it. And it could sit for a couple of months. What's going to happen is the particles within the water, the calcium and the phosphates, are going to build up inside this pump. And it's going to actually mar up the pump. It's going to, it's going to prevent the pump from spinning at, at its RPM. And when you start it up, you end up going to get a code 63 because it's not spinning at its proper RPM. Or it may not be spinning at all. My first one, the pump wasn't working. Brand new unit. I mean, I spent like an hour. Finally, I pulled the pump. I have a new one on the truck. I was swapped it out, turned it on, boom, it worked. But when I looked inside the pump, the pump looked like it was two, three, four years old. If you're familiar with looking inside of pumps, the white calcium buildup, and then it just dawned on me, I'm like, my God, how long did this thing sit? It's like, oh yeah, we put it up a couple of months ago. <laughs> well, that's, so remember, you might want to test it, but drain it out. Don't leave water in it, okay? So, that, and the pump is very simple. They're pull clips, there's one screw with that plate, like I showed you, with the heat exchanger. Um, but it's very simple to swap out back down. All right, so you got all your parameters set, you got everything bled, you bled the tankless out, now you bleed out your loop, and then you go upstairs and you bleed out all your branches. Everything is bled, you got nice flowing water, now you can turn the unit on. Now, back to the brand new install, the brand new house that you built, that they built. You got your cold water. Well, before you even tie that in. You turn the water off in the cleanse the house. You cut your loop because you, most of the time you loop you out to the cold for your test. You cut it out. Have somebody go turn that water on. And uh, we actually have an adapter. We adapt onto the um, cold water pipe. We throw it out so we don't make a mess. We turn the water on. We let it flow for like three minutes. Flush out that system. Even five minutes. Flush out that system before you pop it up into this thing and then you end up clogging up your filter. Okay? So, you blend out all your branches, you're all set. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna test it. You wanna test the temperature cycle, you wanna test the uh, research cycle. So yes, these things do take a little bit more time than a regular RL unit, but I s probably sell for one RL for every four of these RUIs. I don't even bother with the other units. I just sell them an RUR unit because I know they're going to be very happy when, they, when in their master, their water gets there really fast. All right? So that's, uh, that should be everything on this. Uh, we're going to touch into converting this, which is a breeze. Again, it's part of the parameters. Oh, one other thing, which I forgot to mention, make sure you put your little plastic flap back down. It kind of covers everything, makes it nice. And that is also where your little white plug, which is also part of the, uh, inside the bag, that pl this plug right here, which goes at the very bottom of this PC board right here and gets tied onto either your Wi-Fi, well, actually no, because all Wi-Fi now come with this plug on it. But you get this plug in case you're not using the Wi-Fi and you're gonna use the MC195 controller. And the MC195, give me a second here, because you'll see it in two seconds. The MC195 controller just has a black and a white wire. So this thing, of course, if it's an outside unit, has to go in. And if it's an inside unit, you can just mount it somewhere here on the sheetrock, but you have to run some wire to it in order to activate, to have this thing become activated when you pl to plug it into the PC board. All right, so that's it. All righty, today we're gonna start um, the tool. So I'm gonna show you one or two tools that um, I have found through the years of me servicing, not just Renai, a lot of tanklesses and boilers, what I find to be very good to have. So I'm gonna grab two things, and these are gonna be basic, and one of them is gonna be very important. All right, magnetic trays. These things are pretty much one of the best things to use when you're gonna have um, a ton of screws. So here, I got a little screw right here, and it's in the magnetic tray and it won't fall out. 
And I put them, now of course my tanklessness aren't that high, but you can literally put them right there on the side. We have the screws for the door. So here's the four screws for the door. And they're right there. Magnetic trays. They'll stick right on. But just be careful, you know, that they're in there. I also have two others. I have one this big, which is about six inch, five inches round. And then I have a large square, almost a rectangular one that I keep that buried when I do heat exchanges. Because when you're doing, when you're gonna swap out a heat exchanger, you're gonna have a lot of different screws, a lot of the different plates, and different size magnetic trays are very good to have. All right, my second, which I find to be pretty much indispensable, is a good screwdriver. Now, I know if you go through the level three course, they tell you you need a Phillips screwdriver, a manometer, and a multimeter. No, sorry, you need a lot more tools. And I'll show you my tool bag. This is my new tool bag that I set up, but you need to have a very good long Phillips screwdriver. And a screwdriver that actually has teeth on the Phillips end to grab screws. Now I know I showed you this in the other video of removal of the water servo valve, but I have a snap-on, which is very expensive, and then I have a company called Weira. It's a German company. Now, pretty much all my service tools are Weira tools, or Nipex uh, pliers. But this screwdriver, being long, you can get to the back of the unit and still have enough of the screwdriver sticking out, and the teeth in the screwdriver with a little wrap will take out any pretty much any screw because of the way the teeth are formed. And if you're interested in purchasing these wearers, and they're not expensive, they're not expensive at all. They're more expensive than say Milwaukee or you know Crescent or whatever, but a company out of, let's see, where is it? Kansas, called KC Tool Company. I'll put it in the description below. This company sells pretty much all of just German tools. And there's a there's, there's Nipex, there's Weirer, there's Weir, there's I don't even know. I, I I've just started to go through them, but I'll put the company name down. And they don't sponsor me. They I just find them to be inexpensive, very reputable, very fast delivery, and their stock is always at like almost hundred percent so again I get nothing from them I've been dealing with them for uh, I would say uh, half a year or so and they it's a very fast company so everything that I, I have I buy and here is I'll just show you quickly this is my one service bag that I take in and all of the green and black is Weira and all of the blue and red is Nipex and I, I carry a bunch of different tools. And then the other bag over there is my manometer, my multimeter, and some other specialty tools. All right. All right, YouTube. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, again, keep those questions coming. Keep those comments coming in the form of questions. If you have a question, um, my email will be in the description below. And that company will be in the description below. All right. All right, you two, you all be safe out there and continue enjoying your endless hot water. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.